Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Benjamin Mann. You can call me Ben, Dr. Mann, or Professor Mann. I'm an assistant professor of communication and chair of the communication studies program here at EOU. And I'll also be your instructor for COM 410 communication research methods. Thank you so much for taking this course. I'm really excited to chat a little bit about it. Uh, the purpose of this video is to provide you some information about the course, including its structure, and start to dive into some of the information that you'll be exploring throughout this week. My hope is that you'll get a good tempo and flow for the course and have a clear understanding of what to expect week to week in this. So uh, to get us started, I want to go ahead and show you the front page of Canvas. So the front page has all of the information that you need in order to access course material. You'll notice here that it's got the course syllabus that we'll be exploring in a minute, and it also has a link to my Zoom office. Uh, during my office hours, I give people the opportunity if they want to drop in to the Zoom meeting to do so. Uh, just shoot me a quick email or message, and I will make sure to be available to answer any questions or address any issues that you have. I will be in the Zoom office between 9 to 9.45, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 12 to 2, Monday, Wednesday. And if those times don't work for you, I'm happy to set up a separate appointment with you. You'll notice that the way that this course is scheduled each week, there is a specific topic that we'll be getting into, such as an introduction this week. There is an assignment that I'll be asking you to read or dive into. Uh, most of the time, this will be from the Berger textbook. And then you'll also see on the far right what is due each week. Typically, your assignments will be due on Sundays of each week. During most weeks, you'll see that there is a Canvas discussion. And then uh, during other weeks of the course, there will be some type of other writing assignment that you'll complete, such as a proposal. So we'll get into that in just a little bit. Um, I should also note that in an effort to help you in terms of working ahead, I will continue to take time this week to populate uh, the Canvas page for this course so that you can work ahead to future discussions and material if you are interested in doing so. Uh, some of these discussions do require you to engage and respond to other students in the class. So I encourage you, if you want to work ahead, you might drop your initial comments uh, on these discussions and then come back in later to respond to some of these. I should lastly note that while you're welcome to work ahead, uh, these assignments do have a due date, right? So at the latest, you'll need to make sure that you've completed this Canvas discussion number one by this Sunday. You'll notice that there is a textbook requirement for this course, the Burger Reading, uh, but uh, you will not need that reading until the second week of the term. So to help you as you're adjusting into the course and uh, getting your orders in, uh, you'll be able to access a PDF of the first two chapters right here. So uh, that covers the basics of this course on Canvas and the material that you can access there. So I want to take some time to talk about the syllabus for the course and some general expectations. So this is an online course. Uh, it's completely asynchronous, which means that there is no required Zoom meetings nor any in-class meetings in LaGrant. Um, you're welcome to meet with me in my office through Zoom or face-to-face -face if you'd prefer. You'll notice that there is this textbook here, the Media and Communication Research Methods book. Uh, this book has been ordered through the EOU bookstore. And in an effort to make things even easier for you, I went ahead and uh, picked an edition and version that has an ebook copy available for you to access. So um, you'll notice in my previous Canvas announcement, I included the link here. Uh, if you would like to rent an ebook from Amazon, um, you're able to rent that for about $38. If you're having any issues with accessing the reading for this course, uh, please let me know and I'm happy to help you. Uh, the ebook, you just click it and it's all there for you to read. So hopefully that helps you expedite the process. So I do my best to respond to emails as quickly as possible. My window is about 48 hours on business days, but I usually respond sooner, and I will be available in that office to meet with you. This is a senior capstone. Um, what is exciting about this course is that this is designed for folks who are interested in pursuing uh, professional careers related to gathering research, perhaps professional careers in communication or related fields. Uh, so the purpose of this course is to help you gain expertise in different types of methods of conducting communication research uh, between qualitative, quantitative, and textual or rhetorical research methods. And at the end, you'll be able to develop a project that is building off of those skills. Uh, I encourage you, if you're taking courses on campus, to review COVID policies. 
Um, if you are in need of any accommodations, I encourage you to reach out to EOU's Disability Services Office, who will be able to help you. Um, I'm not that kind of doctor, so I can't provide accommodations, but I can direct you to resources to support you. I also encourage you to reach out to Student Affairs if you find yourself in need of additional support, uh, for example, uh, dealing with death or illness in your family. Um, I uh, encourage you to engage with this material with an open mind, right? We'll be looking at a lot of different topics and issues and challenges related to research and methods. Um, so we'll be engaging with those topics in a respectful way. I value diversity, including the varied perspectives and experiences of students in the course from different backgrounds. I encourage you to avoid um, an environment of discrimination or intolerance for people from different perspectives, such as your own. Um, resources here for Title IX are available. I encourage you to actively check your email for any updates or changes related to the course. Uh, please make sure that you are submitting your own original work for this course. Um, so make sure that it is not plagiarized or using AI. Um, doing so is at worst a zero in the course or at best a zero on the assignment. Um, so uh, there's options here related to dropping should you choose to make that decision. Um, so if you've got concerns, uh, there are resources available for you. This is a very independent course, right? This is a course where I provide you resources, but your passion, your interest is going to be much of what drives you through um, the various assignments and activities. So I encourage you to keep pace with the weekly assignments and develop a good amount of time where you're working through the readings and completing the weekly activities. Um, if you reach out to me in advance, I can offer an extension, but um, otherwise, each day an assignment is late is minus 5%. So again, you can turn in assignments early, uh, but there is a deadline each week for some of these assignments. The grading scale is pretty standard for this course. Um, make sure that you are citing your sources in APA, MLA, or Chicago on formal writing assignments. I'm happy to look at your rough drafts or outlines in advance too. So you'll notice uh, during seven weeks of the term, uh, there are Canvas discussions where you have a prompt, you will respond to that prompt, and you'll also engage and listen and respond to some of the comments made by other students. So that's an opportunity for you to think about this kind of like a workshop where you're working through your ideas, you're developing, um, and allowing um, these ideas to really come forward in a productive way. So there are three different types of methods that we'll be looking at in this course, textual, qualitative, and quantitative. For each of those methods, what I'll be asking you to do is to develop a research proposal, right? So that would be a proposal for a type of project you could do related to communication that would utilize that method, right? So we'll take a number of weeks talking about textual, then you'll submit the textual proposal. We'll talk about qualitative, you'll submit the qualitative proposal, and then you'll submit the quantitative proposal last, right? So that doesn't mean you have to actually do the research, but it provides you with an outline with previous literature and background that would be what you would have to set up doing the research itself. So you do that for three different types. And then at the end of the term, you will turn in a final project. So you get to choose one of the three proposals um, that you're interested in the most. Um, and you can do one of three things. You could either develop a full research paper that uses publicly available information. Uh, for example, if you're using textual methods, like you're analyzing something like a speech or public address or publicly available tweets or other information, right? You're welcome to go in and conduct that research and complete a full research paper on that. There is what's known as the IRB or the Institutional Review Board. So this is important. If you are conducting any sort of study that involves human subjects, something such as an interview or uh, conducting something like a survey or data collection of potentially sensitive information, you need to go through an ethical review process before you can conduct that research where a board reviews and determines if the work that you're doing is safe and ethical, right? So for this class, you might not necessarily have the time to go through that entire process of ethical review. However, if you're feeling ambitious and you would like to go through that full process and complete some things like an interview study, a focus group study, uh, a survey type study, you're welcome to work early in the term on completing the IRB form and using that to make sure that you have the all clear. If you're interested in graduate school or professional undergraduate research, uh, this is a great path to choose. 
Uh, you don't have to choose this path, but it is one that could be useful. The other option is to pick an expanded research proposal, right? So to pick one of your research proposals and make a much larger version that establishes more literature, a proposed methods section, uh, in a section discussing anticipated results, right? So your options are either to develop a research paper with publicly available resources, the research paper that involves you receiving IRB approval or exemption, and an expanded research proposal that builds off of your previous proposal. And you can choose of those three, which is the best match for you in terms of your goals and your interests and what you're hoping to gain from the course. There is an extra credit opportunity that I'll offer toward the end of the term too, and this is an upper division UWR or university writing requirement course. So hopefully that information is useful to you as you're thinking about this course, the pacing of this course and its expectations. So I think it's useful for us to talk a little bit about what methods are, right? So methods refer to the strategies that we're using to execute a task. You might think about the phrase, the ends justify the means. Somebody maybe does something that is uh, shady or not seen as ethical, but it makes them money, right? And so their justification is the ends justify the means, receiving money to afford food for their family. Um, in a similar vein, methods refer to how we do the thing, right? So in other words, if we are doing research, how are we doing that research? What are we analyzing? What are we using? In communication, right, what we are researching is communication. So how are we studying that communication? Are we conducting an interview or ethnography where we're going into a place and analyzing that place? Or are we looking at something like the text of a speech or public address and looking at how communication is being used there? So if communication is about how we use symbols to convey meaning, you can probably imagine that there are a huge range of ways that that can be studied in a professional setting. So the goals of this course then are to understand the three main research methods, textual being studying an artifact or communication text and analyzing what that text is doing. Qualitative being using things such as interviews, uh, focus groups, or other types of studies that are very much concerned with analyzing the human component of communication and really not necessarily looking for generalizable information, but looking for information in a specific setting and context that teaches us more about our experience. And quantitative, that is drive, driven by data and numbers, statistics, such as surveys and content analysis that helps us to determine trends, patterns, and behaviors. We'll look at how methods of communication are used, including examples of effective communication research, and we'll show you how you're able to utilize these methods in an independent context to develop your own research and work for this course. So we have the chance to review the syllabus and course schedule. I just remind you that that is available to access on the front page of Canvas to help you as you're working through this course material. So you'll be looking through the first two chapters of the textbook, again, with the PDF available or with the option to purchase it. Um, and from these chapters, we'll be looking at some key questions. What is research and why do we do it, right? What does research look like? We can think about this as arriving at conclusions through study. If you're familiar with the scientific method, it's the idea that if we ask ourselves a question, why is the sky blue? We conduct an experiment or study, we reach a conclusion about that. That adds to our pool of knowledge. So all of the questions and hypotheses we're asking have built off of previous ones. We're constantly evolving, growing, changing, thinking, rethinking theories, and so forth. How does research occur in communication as a specific field? You might think about how specific aspects like interpersonal communication are uh, playing out. Maybe we're examining how a mother and a child are reacting to something like a cancer diagnosis and looking at the dyadic interpersonal communication that happens across those spheres. Perhaps we're examining an array of uh, newspaper articles from the New York Times and looking at how those news articles portray a given topic or issue. Right, So the area that you're focusing on is incredibly important for research and communication too. And then um, we'll also be in the first couple chapters, including in your Canvas discussion, analyzing articles and research pro projects, looking at the types of questions that they ask and how they're using research and strategies in order to answer those questions in terms of developing a research question, using literature, and creating a project that's aimed to address and answer those questions too. 
So to share a little bit about myself, um, I uh, grew up in the western side of Oregon. Um, I grew up in the Westland Lake Oswego area, thought I was going to be a high school English teacher, but I fell in love with communication and speech and debate, specifically in advocating on behalf of an array of issues that are important. Uh, so I pursued a master's in communication in Stockton, California, and then completed a PhD in communication studies at the University of Utah. My research background uh, has involved uh, analyzing interview studies of uh, neurodivergent um, and LGBTQ plus individuals who experience challenges in navigating the healthcare system. I have conducted uh, more content analysis, such as surveys, looking at uh, intercultural behavior and ethnocentrism. Um, and I've also done a lot of textual work, examining media, uh, tweets, and information in that field to understand how they're assembling and putting together uh, information to the public about a range of topics, particularly related to health and disability. So my background is in health communication. I teach a uh, communicating health and science course here at EOU. Uh, and I also have a background in rhetoric and critical cultural studies. I have a lot of expertise in some of the textual methods that we'll be exploring and qualitative work related to disability and digital activism too. Uh, this was the University of Utah debate team that I coached, uh, who won a national championship in 2016, and um, currently here at EOU, we're hoping to get debate started as well. Um, so I have a Labrador retriever named Sylvie. She's very sweet. She really loves getting sticks um, and uh, logs uh, on hikes and going on long hiking trails. I also am a big fan of video game design. Um, I'm working on an independent strategy role-playing game. Um, I also love playing video games. For example, uh, one of my favorites to play um, is uh, in recent days has been Hades. So I love playing video games. Um, I love doing some of these activities in my free time. Um, so that's a little bit about me and I'm excited to get to know more about you. So next week, um, we will talk a little bit more about foundations and textual methods of communication how textual methods work and how textual methods are able to make sense of uh, our shared reality. So uh, best of luck in your first week of the term. I look forward to having your introductions shared in the Canvas discussion, and uh, we will meet again to discuss further next week.